In this screencast, we're going to show how to create a GeoGebra worksheet that calculates the integral from 0 to 5 of x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 15, exactly, and using left Riemann sums with n equal to 5. We're going to have a variable slider, because that's very easy to do, and we're going to make it so that we can change the function and the left and right limits of integration, but in a very basic way. So what is our goal? Here's the GeoGebra worksheet that we want to create. We have the left limit here, a equal to zero, the right limit here, b equal to five, and the function. What I meant by being able to change them very quickly, very basically, is that, for example, we can always double click here in the algebra view and type in a different function. We will have to resize our window, etc but we can change the left and right limits and the function by double clicking in the algebra view. We did make n from 0 to 40, right? At 0 it dies out, but anyway, we'll put it back at 5. We made it so that it shows the definite integral. Here's the left Riemann sum, so we can see we're getting too much here, and not enough here, and definitely not enough there. And as we increase the step size, we can see that we're getting better and better, right? We can see the left Riemann sum is 45, and we can see that the exact integral is 47.92, and we can see what we're getting and losing, right? Okay, that's what we're going to do. The hardest thing is to do this left R, that sequence. Everything else is very basic. So here is our blank worksheet. We put the input bar at the top so that we can see it. And the first thing we need to do is input our function. So we click in the input bar, f of x equals x cubed minus 5 times x squared plus 2 times x plus 15, and we hit enter. We see that it's off the y-axis. So the first thing we probably want to do, because we can see it's positive from 0 to 5, is drag 0 to 5 down here in the corner. And then this is a trick. Hold down Control, or whatever it is on a Mac, and put your mouse pointer on the axes and drag the axes down. You need to be able to see 5. There it is, 5, right there. OK, so this is our integral here because we're going from 0 to 5. Okay, so now we need to put in our left limit and our right limit so we can integrate. So a equals 0, hit enter. b equals 5, hit enter. And now we're going to do the exact integral, which is integral. We start to, to type integral. There it is. We need this one that has a start value and an end value. So that one. And we put f for a function. And we come over to start value, it's the letter A, and the end value is the letter B. The value of the integral is actually the area underneath the curve. So now we're going to put a checkbox, so whether we want to see that or not. So let's go over here and get a checkbox. Click over here and show definite integral. Come in here and choose C the integral. And now get the move tool and we can turn it off and on. So we're done with the, the exact definite integral part. We're ready to start our left Riemann sum. To, in order to do the left Riemann sum, we need to know how many steps we're going to have. So we, need, we, we said we wanted a slider, so let's get the slider tool. Click here. We want it to be an integer value slider because it's the number of steps. Click on integer and it automatically renames it to n. We'll have it go from 0 to 40. You can have it go from 1 to 40, but it's, then it's 39 and it doesn't really work very well. So apply. And then we'll take our move tool and move it to 5, which is our basic starter. Now the next thing we need to do is look again at the formula. Here's the left Riemann sum formula. It's h times the sum of i equal 1 to n of f of x i. So we need to have h. What is the relationship of h to n? This is one of the crucial things for, for us to realize that we, we either define n or we define h, 
and then we determine the other one with respect to the first one. So let's go back to our thing and remember what h is. So h is the size of the step, so it's the entire interval equal to, the entire interval would be b minus a, and then divided by n. So that gives us our step size, which is 1. Let's make sure that this is working. So if we make n bigger, h should get smaller. All right, there it goes. At 10, it's 0.5, so that's good. We've got it working. The next thing is to see how the Riemann sum actually works. We know the formula, and we know the picture, and we want to relate the formula to the picture. That's why we're doing this, right? And we can see that what we need to do is find the f of the left points of these intervals. So we need the, these points right here, but we also need to know all four points of each rectangle in order to draw it. So we're going to need to know this point too. So we're certainly going to need to know all of the x values along the bottom. So how do we find the x values? So, so what's the x value of our left point here? That's x1, because we start with 1, and it is a. Then we go to x2, and how much have we added to a to get to x2? Well, this is our step, which is h, so plus h. And then we add 2h, so x3 is a plus 2h, that's this point here. And then we have x, and what what is its index here? It's n plus 1, right? We have one more than we need, and it's a plus nh. So each time we're adding one less than the index times h. Let's see if we can make a sequence like that. So we have a list of x values, that's what we're going to call it. It needs to be a sequence, okay? This is the part where we have to do some work. This is our counter variable, so it's i. It starts with 1, and what does it end with? n plus 1. Remember, we have one more than the number of steps. So now let's work on our expression. It needs to start at a, and every time it needs to add one less than the counter times h. Let's check it. If i equals 1, this becomes 0, so we get a. And if i equals n plus 1, this is n plus 1 minus 1, n times h, that's b. We're good to go. We'll check it. So we got from 0 to 5. Excellent. There's our list. Now we need to basically do the same thing, but with y. So let's look at this for a minute. Let's copy it. Let's make our list of y's. List y equals, and we'll paste that, what we have there. And now instead of just a plus this, we need the function at that value. So we're going to put an f in front of it, and a parenthesis, and a parenthesis, and that should give us the function values at those points. And sure enough, it does. The function value is zero at 0 is 15, at 1 it's 13, let's see here, at 3 it's about, what does it look like, about 2 or 3, there it is, it's 3, okay, so that's good. Now we'd like to make a list of those points, so what we want to do is take the first element and hook it up to the first element, the second element, hook it up to the second element, and make a list of points, so we're going to call that list PT, we don't actually need this but it's nice to have the points and make sure that everything's working. So it's a sequence, no problem there. We have the same thing here, i from 1 to n plus 1. And now what we want to do is take out the ith element from x and the ith element from y and make a point. So the first thing we need to do is put it in point, point notation, which is parentheses, and a comma between them. So this point place right here is for our x coordinates. So element, let's take that, element. What list do we want? We want from our list of x, and we want the ith element of that list. So go here, ith element of that list. That gives us this the ith element from list x. Then we want to take that and copy it, 
because we're going to be very similar here between for the y coordinate except what do we change we change this to be y so we get the ith element from x the ith element from y we hit enter and there are points and we can see them oh they look great okay now comes the hard part making the rectangles so here we are and we want to make the rectangles we want to draw this rectangle right here and get its area so in order to do that we're going to draw polygons but we need the four vertices of each of these rectangles so how do we find the four vertices well the y coordinate of this one is very easy it's zero the x coordinate it's the ith point so it's xi zero and so we're going to take out the ith element from the x list and zero okay let's go up here what is that well that's xi we can see that it's the same and it's yi the f value of xi so we're going to take out the ith element of x and the ith element of y okay what's this one what's the same between these two points yi what's happened we've moved over one to the right so i plus one i plus one here and then we can see that this one is the same x coordinate so x i plus one and then zero so we're going to take a picture of this and bring it in so we can figure out which lists we need each of these elements from okay so here's our image and so we'll call this list left r because it's the left um, Riemann sum equals and we need a sequence like usual and as usual this will be the hard part let's put these in now this time we don't need quite that many right we only we only need n we're only gonna have n rectangles so one two n right that's the first part that's different we only had n rectangles now the second part is that we need a polygon and we're going to have a list of four points the four corners so point one is xi zero so we're going to need a point so we put that and then we need to take the element from list x the, which element the ith element right okay and now that's the first part of that point what's the second part of that point zero so comma zero there's our first point and now we're going to copy that right there and move over to the next point in the polygon paste it in and then actually we don't want zero we want yi so we're just going to copy this part again here and put it instead of the zero and then what do we need to change there we need to make it y right and now what do we need we basically need that one but with the i plus element we're over here the i plus per first element of x so we copy that and we put it after the comma we're going to need one more point there right but we need not the i element of x the i plus one element of x and then we need this one so we copy it we need to be here comma and then this part that says y here we need it to be zero so let's check to make sure first of all we have points yep that's that good one all right mm -hmm. color codes them now right that's good that's good and all the way back all right okay let's try it and see what it goes let's take our image out here and hit enter there they are great oh that looks what good now let's check it by moving this perfect and then the last thing we might want to do is sum these so we can find out how much the Riemann sum is notice that it gives us the areas of each of the rectangles so all we have to do is sum the, the list is what we need to do so left sum and you can notice right right away that there's a ready to use Riemann left sum there but we're not using it is equal to 
uh, we want to sum and it wants a list and we put in left R and we should get how much it is 45 and if we add up these values we'll see that it's 45 and as we increase this it gets closer and closer to hopefully the exact value and we can see the exact value now there is a slight problem with this formula we're actually adding the areas of rectangles and areas are always positive whereas our formula is add h times the sum of the y values. So we need to change it just a little bit, but we've got a list that'll work for us. These are the y values. So the sum works great when the function is positive, but if the function goes negative, we need to be working off this list. So let's go up here and change it. So left sum equals and h times the sum and this time we're going to pick this one down here. We're going to use list y. And how many of the elements do we want? N of the elements. And we should get 45 again when we hit enter. So this should still be 45 here. So let's hit enter and we get 45. But now if the function goes negative, it will actually pick up the y value. So now we've actually used this formula in our, in our calculation of the list sum left sum. Finally, if we want to, we can add a checkbox, show left mean and sum, and connect it to left R our list so we can see those. So then we can turn off the rectangles if we want to and show the definite integral. That is that.